Hello, wonderful pupils. How are you all? Hope you're all fine and healthy. Please ensure you keep to the advice of medical practitioners by ensuring to always wash your hands on a regular basis with soap and running water for 20 seconds. And in the absence of that, you can as well use an alcohol based sanitizer. Please do that every 20 minutes and stay safe. Avoid social gathering. Is that taking on? Good. I welcome you all once again to this wonderful session of our virtual teaching and learning process. I remain my humble self, Mr. Olapadi Moses. Now we are going to be doing justice to a very interesting subject, civic education. And the topic we're going to be discussing for this section, before we go into the topic, I want us to know that we need to do a kind of recap on what we did in our last session. Don't forget that in our last session, we did constituted authority. We discussed what? Constituted authority. And what is constituted authority is all about? I told us that the first question I asked us in the previous session is that, what is constituted authority? And we said, constituted authority are those laws that guides us on what to do in a society. And the second question we asked ourselves was, who is a constituted authority? And we answered by saying, a constituted authority is that person who is elected or appointed to what? To oversee into what? The smooth running of the society. That is who is vested with that power and authority to what? To guide and lead the people in the society. And we gave examples. We gave two types, which is the organizational constituted authority, under which I told us that we have our proprietor, and also we have the the dangote of our time. We have the second one, which I said was the traditional constituted authority, and under which we have the Sosan of Shokoto, the Eme of Kano, the Alapi of Oyo, the Oni of Ife. I mentioned them, there are so many. The, about of Benin, they likewise. So these are traditional constituted authorities. Is that taking now? Good. But today, I told us in the previous session that we are going to continue with that topic. And today we are going to continue with that same topic. So it's going to be a continuation of our previous section and topic. Now, the topic still remains the same. Constituted authority, which is continuation, as you can see on the screen. Now, let's quickly look at the aims, the objective of our lesson. It says, at the end of the lesson, the pupils should be able to mention and explain some of the constituted authority. That is, mention some of what? Of the constituted authority that we have. You don't forget that we started this in our previous session. So we are to continue with it, with the third type of what? Constituted authority. In the previous session, we mentioned two types. Now we are going to start from number three now. The third one says religious constituted authority. Religious constituted authority. Now, what do you mean by religious constituted authority? From the word religious, the first thing that should come to your mind is what is religion. Is that also? Well, I know you are all smart kids. You already know this. The first thing that should come to your mind is what is religion. Now, these are our religious leaders, the religious leaders, the leaders in our church, which is the pastors, the general overseers, like you have in this diagram. Can you see now? That's Adeboe, that's the general overseer of Redeemed Christian Church of God, who we know as what? Pastor E. Adeboe. Is that also? This is a religious leader. This is another religious leader. This is the chief imam of Lagos State. And this is another religious leader. This, don't forget that the first one is a Christian. This is an imam. This is a Muslim. And the last one is a chief priest, a traditionalist. Is that taken out? So these are religious leaders. It simply means they are spiritual leaders of societies communities or just group of people 
That is, they are the spiritual leaders that we have in our society. We have them living with, with us in the societies. And also, we have our pastors in the church. They are our leaders. Is that taken out? If you go to church every day to listen to the word of God, and the person who says or gives the sermon every now and then is the head of the religious house, who is the pastor or the imam or the chief priest. Is that taken out? So now let's look into their function. What are their functions? Now the functions of religious constituted authority. Now we have the persons to be, they provide the spiritual support of their members. They provide what the spiritual support of the members. That is, they provide the spiritual support for their members. The members of this church receive what? The members of these religious houses receive what? Receive spiritual support from these leaders. Is that taken out? So if they are in need of anything, it is these religious leaders that, what, that provides for these needs. Is that taken out? If any member of their either church, mocks or tradition is having one problem or the other, it is these traditional and uh, these religious leaders that what that provide for these needs. They are the ones that cater for what for these needs. Is that taken out? Another one is that they serve as interlink between God and people. Is that also? This is very much correct. They serve as interlink between God and the people. This is very much true because it is these people that what that makes us to connect with God. They help, they help us what to connect better with God. They serve as interlink. When we want to go to God, we go to God through them. Is that also? They teach us some of those things to do in order to, uh, to seek the face of our Creator, who is God. Is that also good? So these people, are, they are our spiritual leaders, and they serve as interlink between us and who? And God. By giving us the doctrine, telling us what and what we need to know about the God we serve. Is that taking good? Now, on that thing is that they help in educating people on many aspects of the government. Yes, you may be wondering that how is it possible that a pastor and a mom or a chief priest educate, educate people on the aspect of the government? Yes, they do. Several times when you go for service, you listen to their sermons. They normally give us details and what is happening, what we need to know about our government. Yes, they do that. It's only if you don't pay attention when you go to your, to, to your place of worship. That is why you will not know that they normally give us instructions, advice on what and what we should do and how to relate with the government and, what is, and telling us what is happening what in government. They do that. Is that taken on? Another thing these religious leaders do is what they provide the assistance in maintaining peace between the members of a society. Yes, this is number one. This is the number one function of these religious leaders, which is bringing about peace. Because all what they preach, the essence of our going to a religious house is for us what to have peace of mind. Is for us to have what peace of mind. So these religious leaders help in bringing about what? Help in bringing about peace. They give us goodwill message. Goodwill message of what? Of peace. Telling us the need for us to, to live in peace and harmony. No, because don't forget that our, our watchword as Christians is to what? Even as Muslims or as traditionalists is what? Is to love one another. And when you love one another, there will be what there will be peace. Because you, can you fight someone that you are, you are in love with? Of course not. You cannot love someone and, and fight the person. It is not done. That is why they preach love. They all preach what? Love. Because love is the first thing, is the prominent thing in every society, in every religious houses. So if you love somebody, you cannot fight the person. You always wish the person good. So that is why in, the, in our religious houses, they always preach what we call love to us, so that love will bring about peace and harmony in the what in the society.
Is that understood? Is that understood? Good. Now, let's move into the fourth type of question authority, which is the fourth and last on the list. We have government considered authority. Yes, I know you all shouted, wow, you are all conversant with this image. Is that also the image of this is the image of our president, Muhammad Buhari, and this is the image of who? Who is this? Good, I can hear you say about this so Wulu. That's the his excellency, governor of Lagos State. Now, this will give you an insight to what government considered authority is all about. He said these authorities are elected or appointed according to the constitution to perform constitutional duties over the country, state, or local government. Do not forget that these government officials, the one you are seeing on your screen, Buhari, Songwulu, and the likes, they were elected. Is that not so? They were elected, though some of them were appointed. We appoint the, some of the ministers. We have ministers to, who were appointed. Is that not so? The ministers were appointed, but Majority of them were voted for. That is, majority of these government considered authority were what were voted for. We voted for Buhari, we voted for Sonwolu, we voted for Sheima Kide, the governor of Oyo State, we voted for Dapwabiodo, the governor of, um, what was it called? The governor of Ogo State, we voted for Udom Emmanuel, the governor of Akwa Ibom State. So many of them like that we voted for to become our leaders. Is that taking now? And the essence is what? Is to lead us, is to show us the right path to what? To follow. Is to show us the right path to what? To take. Is that taking now? Now let's look into the functions of this government constituted authority. Why did we elect them? Why were they appointed? That's the question. Why? Why do you have to elect these people? Why do we elect Buhari? Why did we vote for Sonwolu to become our governor? Let's look at some of the reasons why he voted them in, which is their function. The first one says, their main task is to provide help against any internal or external threat. That is what the first and the most important function of this government constituted authority. That is to provide help against any internal or external threat. When what this implies is that to protect the lives and property of the people, the reason for having government is to what is for us to be protected, is for us to what not to witness crisis, is for us to live in peace and in harmony, because. We wanted a government that will put what that will bring about peace to our society so that people or enemies will not attack us. There won't be crisis within our country or external crisis. Is that taken out? Good. So that's the main purpose of electing these people, these people, which is to what? To help against any internal or external threat. But Unfortunately, we are having so many internal or external threats. We have been having a particular internal threat for the past, how many years now? For the past 10 years in, in Boko Haram. They have been killing innocent Nigerians, killing women, killing men, killing adults, killing young, killing even babies. These are the essence of voting these people, to put an end to put a stop to these killings, to put a stop to this threat of life. But reverse has been the case. It does not, it does not even look like stopping at all. Because every day, if you watch your news, if you are conversant with the news, you, you always see that people die every now and then. People die every day. Now the question you need to ask yourself is that why did you elect these people in the first place? Why do you elect them? Why do you elect Buhari? Why do you elect Sonwolu? It's not to protect us, but now the question now is, are we protected? 
Are we safe from internal threat? Are we safe from external threat? Huh. You can answer that yourself. Is that not so? Good. Now, another one is that they make laws. Yes, they make laws. These are some of the reasons why we elected them to make what? To make laws. And um, now the question is I want to ask you a question. What arm of government or tiers of government makes law? What arm of government makes law? Yes, I can hear you say legislation. Yes, the legislation what? Make law. That's the function of legislation. Yes, we have the upper and lower chamber. The House of Senate and the House of Rep. Is that taken now? So those are the people that what that make law. They are the part of the government that what that make law. They are the part of government that what that make law. Please take note of this. Take note of this. The government make law. They make law. They execute. Is that taken now? They execute. That's the first arm, which is the executive arm of government. Those are the ones that ensure that the laws that are made are being followed to the latter. Is that taken now? That's the executive under which we have president, governor, the, the police. These are enforcement agencies. They execute laws. The, the, we talked about legislation. Who are the ones who make law? The last one is the judiciary. That's the third arm of government. We have the executive, we have the legislature, and we have the judiciary. The judiciary are the ones who interpret the law and prosecute offenders. So anyone who goes against the law is being prosecuted. Is that taken out in the court of law? These are the ones we know as what well as the judiciary. So the people who make law are those we elected into government. They are the ones who make law. So one of the functions of what? Of government constituted authority is to what is to make law. Is that taken on? Good. Now, let's move to the third one, which says they execute laws. I've told you this in the, in the essays, in the place of explaining the first, the first, the second one we mentioned, which is they, they make law. The third one is what saying that they execute law. I told you that legislature makes law. Is that not so? That's legislative, the legislative arm of government. The, the other arms of government that execute law is what? The executive, is that now? The executive are the one that what that execute law, as the name implies. Executive from the word executive, ex execute, executive. Is that taking now? So another one is they protect rights of all individuals in the society. They protect the rights of all the individuals in society. Is that taking now? They protect our rights. They do not want to jeopardize our rights. They do not deny us of our rights. Is that taken now? As citizens of this country, if you are more than, if you are up to 18, you have every right to vote. Is that taken now? You have every right to what? To vote. You have every right to what? To vote. You have right to movement. You have right to what? To movement. You have right to speech, that is to talk. So all these rights are what government should protect. It should protect us when what? When embarking on what? On doing or using all these rights of us. But the reverse is the case. In most cases, you see people being prosecuted or unjustly arrested for what? For doing something that is normal exercising their right. They have been arrested for that. It is not done. It is very, very bad for, for a government to be arresting people for exercising their own right. It is not done. But we just pray that God will what? We help us in this country. And God will restore what? We restore peace back into this country. Is that taken out? So the, one of the functions of the government is to what? Is to protect our, our right. To protect our right. Now, the people that are put in charge to protect our rights, these same government who are supposed to be protecting our rights, are the one what? Are the one denying us of this same right. 
Is that supposed to be so? Of course not. Now let's look to the last one on under the functions of the gov government constituted authority. We have they provide social needs to the society like water, gas, electricity. Now this is one of their most important functions as government of our society. This is one of the things that made us want to elect them. Don't forget that before they were elected, they came campaigning, telling us, even at, in front of our house, telling us they will give us water, they will give us electricity, they will give us gas, they will give us good road, they will give us this, they will give us food. All these they promised before they were elected. Now, the question to us now is, are we having enough water? Hmm. Everybody is having his or her own borehole water in his or her own house because the government have failed to what to provide this water for us. If you go to developed countries of the world, you hardly see any house with a private borehole having bow in their house, their own water. No, it is government water that runs through almost all of the houses in other countries of the world, in developed countries of the world, like in America. They don't, they, don't even, they don't cry for water, they don't cry for electricity. They have light 24 7. But look at what we have here in Nigeria. The light they promise us, they did not give us. They promise us change. Change they didn't give us. Have you seen that now? So, some of the things they need to what to give to us is to what? Is to provide electricity, water, good roads. Mention them. Food, shelter, even education. Look at our education system. It's in shambles. Look at our public schools. It's nothing to write home about. Of course, these tortures are, are so bad that you cannot even stay on the net and study. It is very, very bad. We got the airports in this country. So these are some of the functions of what? Of the government considered authority. Now, in summary, considered authority is ensure everyone lives in peace and unity. That's one thing that you need to know. That the essence of this, of all of the considered authority we've mentioned, both starting from the, starting from the organizational considered authority to, to the traditional, to the religious, and ending with um, the government, they all ensure what every life is in peace and unity. That everyone live in what in peace and unity. That is the general aim of all. That is the general function of all of them. Is that taken out? They all have that function embedded on them to what to ensure peace and unity. Is that understood? Now let's quickly look into the questions we have so that we can be rest assured that our lesson was a success and it was very, very interesting. Now, the first one says, mention two constituted authority. Two constituted authority, we discussed just two in this section. The first one we discussed was what? The first one we mentioned was what? Was religious constituted what? Authority. And the second one, where we mentioned the, the chief imam, the chief priest, and the pastors, we are the head of religious houses. And the second one was what? Government considered authority, where we have Boagi, Sonwulu, Makinde, Udom Emmanuel, the problem, these are considered authorities. Is that taken now? Go, please do your assignment. Give me feedback. Is that taken now? Please ensure you study hard for your coming exams. I promise, I, 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 I trust you all that you will all come out in flying colors. Amen. Remain blessed. Remain safe. Please ensure to always wash your hands regularly with soap and water. Is that taken now? And in the absence of that, you can as well use your what? Your, uh, your alcohol based sanitizer. Please use that. Do that always. Always. Every 20 minutes. You do that. And always use your face mask if you must go out. Avoid 
social gathering. Is that taken out? Good. I remain my humble self, Mr. Olapade, till we meet next. Bye for now.